Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's session of the Office Hour. First thing we will be having on the financial modeling one. His name is Charles Otogil, and he's uh, an expert in financial modeling. He's been doing this for a very long time. He worked with uh, one of the top uh, telco companies. He's worked in a lot of a few, a couple of companies in the telco space, and he's doing amazing things. I'm going to let, let him do the talking and, and um, so Mr. Charles, over to you. Tell us your story, how you went from not knowing anything about financial modeling. If you want to sneak in, you know, your Excel experience also great, you know, as much information as possible. Now we have 16 people live. They, 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 they kept, they kept on it. They didn't, they didn't uh, go because they want to hear your story. <laughs> All right. Okay. It, it, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to relate all of that. And um, uh, let, let me just hope I'm not telling Michael's uh, story all over again. <laughs> we seem to we seem to always have um, something in common. Most of us who have uh, this passion, you know, for Excel. What I have here is actually. Um, all about me so far. Um, I'm a graduate of business administration, um, but I, I love the things about operations management. I love things about information system. I love what computer can do with work. And so that's why my major was mostly on that uh, area. And uh, my work experience has also been one that has always, you know, used uh, 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 Microsoft Excel I've been in the oil and gas, been in the telecom industry, both in the engineering and in the service provider sector of uh, telecoms. And um, like you can see, these are my proficiencies. Um, uh, I love Excel that much. And um, so I got certified from Microsoft as a Microsoft um, Office Specialist for Microsoft Excel and Microsoft Access. Um, I use Power BI, I, I code in Visual Basic for Applications, which is VBA. I do things on Python Pandas. Like you can see, I seem to be so much in love with data that I bring tools. I want to learn tools that uh, we can use to work with data. Uh, currently, I'm uh, doing some consulting on financial modeling, thanks to uh, persons like uh, Michael. Uh, he was very encouraging in this regard. And um, so that's where I find myself now. I'm also working up on a startup, High Five Data and Systems. Mm. It's all data, data, data anyway, but that's my love. And um, I also do create videos on YouTube. Like if you go to High Five Tutorials uh, on YouTube, you'll see my videos there that uh, border on financial modeling, data analysis, and uh, all of that. Yeah, and um, I love I, I love business intelligence that much. And so um, I, I'm also open to work uh, as a business intelligence person in any organization, especially because of the powers of, power, of uh, Power BI and uh, Python Pandas. So that's it about uh, me, and uh, that's me there. And um, my journey in Excel. Hmm. Actually, um, it was sometime in my 200 level, and um, I had a friend, a lecturer friend by name Bolaji Oladinde. He's a professor now uh, at the University of Benin. He said, he called me and said that he sees that I always like to play with computers and he wants to show me something on Excel. And what he just showed me was how to add two numbers and uh, use the uh, function, the sum function to do that. So that if I change any of the numbers, I automatically get the answer. And that was the spark in my head that told me that there was something special about this application. So I started off with Excel, learning how to use it to the extent that in my final year, when I was doing my project, I was working on queuing theory, which some might call waiting lines management. It was a, a quantitative topic. Um, so I used Excel 
And this time I was working not on single channel model, but multiple channel models. And uh, I remember my lecturer said that you're not going to be able to do this because we were working with 25 systems. How are you going to, you know, model all of it? He never knew that Excel was the power I was going to use. And so I used that and it worked fine. And those, every of those moments of achievements were telling me, go Excel, go Excel, go Excel. So when I had the opportunity to be on the internet, I moved to the next phase, which was uh, joining the international community. Specifically, there are three people that played a lot of role in my uh, Excel, and uh, that's Mr. Excel, Bill Jellings. Um, I read a lot of his books. Uh, I saw problems that he solved and how creatively he solved those problems. So there, there was also Chandu. Chandu was uh, the Indian guy. There were these creative ways he applied Excel functions. And I was following each of his posts day by day, day by day, and I wanted to learn. And I see what he has done, I practice it. Even if I had in the data, I had the access to his data, I create data and see how it works. All of these were like, you know, uh, burning Excel functions into my brain. And uh, I was happy with what I could do. Then I came into LinkedIn. And I know without LinkedIn, I wouldn't know somebody like Michael. So we were there. If you go to Nigerian Excel users, uh, that came through LinkedIn. We were bringing in questions, solving questions. Some of the questions were questions at the moment we couldn't find an answer to. So we had to Google check what's the answer, who is going to be the first to send in a solution that works. All of these were just building, you know, the DNA of Excel in one does it for every other person. And so that was really what helped me to get a good hold on Excel. And so all what I was doing then I would call data analysis, not really financial modeling. Because it was when I got to the third phase, delving into financial modeling, when I was working with uh, Helios Towers, that was when uh, I saw financial models for the first time. And not just financial models, they were international financial models. The structure was different. Most of the, when before, I used to model vertically, but now I was seeing models that run horizontally and allowing you to do a lot of things in financial modeling. So, seeing all those uh, uh, models i wanted to just be like that i just wanted to model that way and i had a boss oladip obadru who was very very help helpful in helping me understand the accounting side of financial modeling you see and uh, my other work colleague olajide adamoleku was very good with excel too in fact I got that job through LinkedIn because he was also solving problems there. I was bringing solutions there. And it was like, who is this guy that competes with me and says he's in Lagos? We need to meet. And so that was how we met. And uh, before long, I was working in Helios uh, Tours. So much of that happened. I got to see uh, publications that um, borders on financial modeling like the ones that discuss the fast approach to financial modeling. And so um, I read through them, saw best practice of financial modeling, and that is how I, I got to, uh, that's how I got to where I am uh, today. Great, great, awesome. Uh, I have been collating points from what you've said and posting it into the general Q&A and prompting people to ask questions. So I said point number one is interest first. You know, you took interest, you know, you started with yes. while you were in 200 level and, you know, you came across uh, something that involved Excel, the lecturer showed you something simple, but it sparked that interest. And that was the first thing for you. And you, and you, 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 you took that and, 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 
further went further with that, right? And then I said yes, um, yes. Point, number, point number two was that um, you took deliberate studying. So you you started reading from experts, other experts like Bill Jelen, uh, yes. uh, Chandru. <laughs> Chandra is really very popular in Nigeria. Yeah. Sometimes people are, they wonder how come we know him a lot more than we know some of the other people. Uh, and it's you see, I, I'm really, that. I, I was, I was really wondering. I said he should, he should come and visit Nigeria. <laughs> yes, he really owes us a visit because he has so many fans. Yeah. Yes. yes. So and then I said point number, <laughs> point number three. Uh, Point number three, I said, you know, you went ahead to connect with like minds. So you connected with with like minds on, on other platforms. You joined the community. You know, you didn't just um, go solo on it and just like, OK, uh, just whatever I know, I stay in my own corner. You try to, to also relate with other people. And then I was typing point number four, <laughs> and that is a uh, you you are active on other professional platforms and so you you are contributing actively to that community yes. you you are sharing what you know with others while you learn from others so uh, those are very four four key points that i think everybody should take away you know in their journey from zero to hero and learning all from you your experience okay so uh yeah. I want to check if they have collected any questions for you to answer. Okay. Yes, yeah, someone says he supports. Someone says he supports we inviting Chandu for Nigeria Excel meetup. Okay, I have his email address. I will try and take a shot at it. And, yeah, well, and, and well, try and well, we on that. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing is, uh, I don't know. Maybe we should start with a virtual event. You know, you should join for a virtual event first. Oh, that would, then, that that's great. That would be a great one. I, I think that can happen as soon as possible. Okay. So, okay. Uh, yeah, still over to you. You know. Uh, point number four is a bit. So, from going from there, from what you said about your journey so far. Now, I'm sure a lot of people want to even hear. I'm studying this. Uh, I've, I'm, I've taken interest in financial modeling. I've been trying to study, do courses. Some people here, there are people who came to know about this thing via some courses we, we offer. And some other people have been doing self study. Some are coming from different groups where they do learn knowledge share. And so the, the question is, OK, how do I make all these things fit together? Because at some point it can become really frustrating and people start feeling lonely. They start feeling like they are putting a lot of effort. They are just not seeing how all of this will lead to a, a, a serious career transition for them. So can you try and um, encourage them? How can you orient them around having the right mindset and positioning themselves for making this truly a career for themselves? Okay, okay, that that's uh, that's fine. Um, I don't know if uh, uh, that I'm going to be by some way answering the question we're about to. We should be answering later. On what is financial modeling? You see, my approach is this, and I always tell people: first, understand what the scope of financial modeling is all about. You see that. Uh, the, that, that's where a lot of people get it wrong. Because some people start financial modeling from modeling some very advanced concepts and uh, um, they end up uh, discouraged when they see that, uh, well, it's so advanced, they can't put it together, they don't know where it fits. I worked in an organization uh, recently and I saw somebody who felt that um, he, he, he tried to learn financial modeling, but a lot of things are so complex about it. You see, we need to, we need to, to, to separate the different facets of financial modeling and start learning them in an order that will help you appreciate financial modeling. One of it is that you should understand the concept of finance and a little of accounting. These are very, very important because finance, as the name goes, 
involves three things. One, source of form. Two, application of form. And three, evaluation of what that application of form is because you want to maximize either profit, wealth, or whatsoever. These are the three things. So you should understand the relationship of all of this even before you touch Excel. Understand their relationship before you touch Excel. Because remember, what you're doing is a model. So before you have a model, you already have in your mind what the relationships in that model are. And accounting and finance helps to establish the relationship that you want to put inside Excel. So once you understand all of that, the next thing that you can now go into is to come into Excel. And when you come into Excel, do not start building models, no. The first thing you should do is take all the functions, take functions that you know can be used in financial modeling. You can get this on the internet, uh, I have I have a, a, a lot of them on my YouTube channel because that was the problem I faced. My problem was I, I know this function, but I did not know the model very well. So I had to go and learn the model before I came back. And then I can see my functions and know which function can be applied for each of the models that I want to establish. So what individuals should do is first, understand the function. What does the function do? You know, take simple arithmetic or mathematical examples to study how Excel functions behave. So if you have, I think, uh, uh, between uh, 15 and 20 of these functions that recurrently come up in financial model, you understand what they do, then it is very easy. When, because you know the model you want to build and the relationship behind that model, it is very easy to pick functions, tools, and then apply them and build up your model. So at that point, you are a financial modeler. When you understand Excel functions, what they do individually, don't, don't understand them as used for financial modeling because we use, there are other models, there are operational models. The people in the oil industry, they do operational models and they use these same formulas that we are using, but they understand the model behind the model as if it were. So once you have that, you have those two things, you can put them together and get to the level of artistry because financial model is a science and it's also an art. You see, art in the sense of how do I lay out, present, my model so that it, it yields the objective that uh, uh, I want it to yield. How do I lay it out such that even if I'm not there, that users will be able to see my model, understand what the model is trying to do, and then use it also. So this is what, this is the scope of financial model. You cannot start, I would say, from the art of financial modeling and start to understand financial modeling, especially if you have my kind of head, you see. Yes, you can learn the models behind it. You can independently learn the functions behind it. And then you can start bringing these together to, to see how you can model finance related uh, 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 models. Then beyond that, you want to look at structure because structure matters in financial modeling. So this is, this is my advice for anybody. After you've done this, start modeling, um, start modeling for simple things. You get it? Like I was on Naira land one time and I saw somebody who said, uh, 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 this is how you can buy and sell t-shirts. I went to Excel and built a model on that. You can find it in my YouTube channel. So I built a model on that. And some persons might think, ah, this is too simplistic for a model. No, but when you see what it is, you see that it can take in a lot of things that you build in even sophisticated models. But start from that point. Once you have gained a mastery to model just anything, then the advanced ones will not be difficult for you. 
Because when you know the model behind those advanced models, when you understand the finance behind it, it is not difficult to model after that. So this is my this is my suggestion to anybody who is going into financial modeling. Uh, there are some questions that have come, and I'm going to read them to you. And uh, some people are already asking. Uh, I think at a point you will have to share how they can connect with you, so I can also uh, let them be aware of that. Uh, so now. Uh, there's someone who is your colleague from Helios. His name is Tayo. So he's wow. saying hi. He says he used to call you prof. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. He's testifying to the wonders that you do. So yeah, I, I said I'm wow, going to mention that I'm passed that across to you. Yeah. So uh, and then someone else is asking, he's saying, how did you build your financial theoretical knowledge? You know, so how did you go from uh piecing together those pieces because that's, that's the thing, putting together those building blocks that uh, okay. takes care of the theoretical side. So as you are doing the Excel side, you're also fitting together all of those different parts of the puzzles that needs to be. So what you do becomes really, really valuable on the management on a bigger level. So please have that in mind while I also read the last question I've collated. Uh, while I will still collate more questions when you are answering these ones. Um, okay. So this person is saying, while you explored the wonders of Excel in doing your work while at work, how did you manage timelines on your deliverables at work in a way that did not offend your boss while you are exploring other solutions? Most bosses prefer you get tasks done using the time-tested manual methods. <laughs> How did you survive slash thrive in such rules? I hope the question was not too long to... No, no, I, I, got, I got it. I got it. I can respond okay. to that. Yeah. Okay. So let, let right. me share this. Let, let me share this um, um, to explain further on the first uh, uh, question. Thanks to, I, I think that was Tayo. She's been an inspiration right from Helios Towers. And it's good to have her online here. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I want you to look at uh, this. Um, let, let me just uh, okay. make it uh, okay um, here. Okay. I want you to look at this very well. Here, I try to capture. Um, uh, Hope you can see my PowerPoint. Yes, yes. Okay, fine. It, I've so sent it to I the try to capture what financial modeling is, trying to look at it from the finance side, the model side, and the uh, spreadsheet side, you see. And so this is uh, like a model that you can take to improve your financial modeling, you see. Understand what finance is, the source of fund, the application of fund, evaluation of these funds, and so on. And then understand the uses of this function, which we are of these models, which we all know. You see, then you need to come and understand model. When we say model, so don't let it confuse you. You know, back in school, we had this model for calculating the area of a triangle, half the base times the height times the height that is the model so in accounting and finance we do have models you get it so one of the things you can do is try to understand what it entails to model for revenue most of the trainings there will have maybe one line for revenue and then tell you to you know grow this revenue with a percentage but what if you come into a situation where you have three, four, five revenue streams and each of these streams have different behaviors, seasonalities and others? So in this case, you should understand how to model revenue, how to model cost of sales. Take it step by step, understand the model behind it and then find a way to put it down in Excel. You see, it's progressive, I must say. It's progressive to build your knowledge in financial model. So if you take it that way, 
you will be able to understand what exactly the model is and then uh, handle it. For the spreadsheet side of it, side of it, you can see what I'm saying there, that you need functions, you need formulas, you need best practice, model best practice, to bring about the different types of models that you might have in financial modeling. So it's step by step. Yes, most of our trainings would give us everything, but for you as an individual, take it step by step. You get that. Then ask questions, get mentors, get people. You have Michael there. You can always have me to help you to see, okay, this is what next to do. This is what next to do. And within six months, you could be very good as a financial uh, modeler. I think the pain points in financial modeling is the Excel. Because so many people using Excel function looks like programming. You get it. But, you know, if you can lose those, you know, hard blocks that tells you Excel is programming, you find modeling that easy. And then, having understood that, you, are, you should understand these relationships. Here, I tried to show you what these relationships could be. You see, each of your three financial statements are related. You see, for example, here, you see I have depreciation and amortization, but it will be coming from somewhere in the balance sheet. It has a place where it's also represented as fixed assets. Then you have this other relationship that is taking place here. I may have things like uh, depreciation, interest and taxation. If all these have been unpaid, it has an effect on the cash flow. Because in the cash flow, I don't want to recognize cash that I did not spend. So you need to understand which item relates to which other item in these different statements. Here again, you see this other one here. And, and, uh, and what this one is, is telling us is that, oh, your net earnings has got representation in the balance sheet as retained earnings and also has got a place in the cash flow, you see. And so it builds like that, you see, it builds like that to get all that relationship. Take time to understand each of these relationships as individuals before you put them together and then build whatever models that you want to build. So that's how you come about this sophisticated relationship that you are seeing here, you see. Initially, like, it looks sophisticated, but if you start taking them one by one, you find out that they are not that sophisticated. And as, as I will always say, it is progressive. Understanding that relationship is so powerful in helping you to understand other relationships in the models. You see that? So that is why you should take your time to do uh, understand these relationships. Then for the other question, that was asked, how did I find time, even amidst work, to do all of this? Well, let me just tell you one thing. I, I had the advantage of knowing Excel um, early in my university uh, days, and that was an advantage. I don't know how it would have been if I started to learn Excel while I, I, I was working. You know, I can't really tell I'm not in that shoes. But let me tell you something. Again, I want to use the word progressive. If you understand how to use one formula, other formulas are not difficult. Other formulas or functions will not be difficult for you to quickly understand and implement. You get it. Recently, we had some additions in Excel. The filter function, we had the X lookup function, I had not used them before, but I just went and said, let me try, let me try to see if I can implement this thing without learning. Let me use my past knowledge. And it worked. You see that? It worked. All you need to know is that, okay, I have these 15, 20, 25 functions in my toolbox that I can use. I want to understand what they do. And let me tell you something. As you grow in the number of functions you learn in Excel, this is what's going to be happening. 
your your work pace, the pace at which you finish tasks, will be faster, creating opportunities for you to learn. My boss saw that I was achieving things fast, and he had this policy that, sorry, if I don't have work for you, you can do anything you want to do. You get it. He was so wonderful at building our talent in that way. So once I'm through with my work, I open the internet, I start learning, you see. And when I say I start learning, I did not do it three, five, ten functions a day. I was strict about it. One function every day. One function every day. And within a month, I had learned a lot of functions. You see that? So after you've done that, after you have done that, look at models that are in YouTube and others. See how they are processed. You will now see something else that will help you. Creativity. And that creativity, you can't learn it in an Excel textbook, I must say. You cannot learn it on your own. You just have to learn it from people who are experienced. You get it? And who are using these functions to do other things. Because if you learn something like some function from Microsoft websites or some, some products rather, some products, you will never know that some products can be a lookup function. It is not in the lookup function uh, list. You see that. But it does wonderful things in looking up numbers. So this is only something you can learn by looking at how people creatively implement functions. And that's my suggestion for you. Okay, so thanks a lot for that. We are we are now like uh, 15 minutes away from rounding up the, 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 the this session, and it's wonderful advice. Yeah, I'm sure you're all hearing. At the point, I couldn't type anymore, so I'm sure <laughs> that for those who miss this, they can always go to the YouTube. Uh, we have a YouTube channel that you can. We're going to put this up, so you can be able to to you know rewatch and take notes and whatever you missed get them some of you have asked how you can uh is a uh, charles youtube channel i have already i've already pushed that up so you should be able to see that in the chat box so uh, i think there is one we can take one more question before we start trying to round off so what someone is asking uh what's the reasonable fee to charge a startup as a new financial modeler. What's reasonable fee to is it reasonable fee to charge? Okay. What is the reasonable fee to charge a startup as a new? Uh, I think what he means is he is that is is becoming a financial modeler now. And I think maybe yes. there are some people who run startup that he can help and he wants to ask how much should he charge them? Okay, so Charles over to you. Okay. Okay, <laughs> yeah, that that is a that's an age-old question, you know, and um, there is no um, single um, fit for such charges. You see, sometimes you could use hours. You see, you could you you could. What I advise this is my advice. This is what I use for somebody else now. I took the model and broke it into pits. You see, uh, the revenue model, the cost of sale model, the OPEX model, and I, 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 I tried to find, I tried to assume how many hours I will spend in each of these tasks and came up with the total number of hours I would spend on it. And then what I did was Given a charge, given a charge that, okay, this is how much I feel I'm worth for an hour, you can now multiply by the total number of hours and come up with what the individual should pay or the, the person who wants a startup model uh, should pay. But sometimes when you are starting, you want to establish your proficiency, you want to build clients, and all of that. So um, what you're charging might be some 75% of uh, what you would have charged. You get it. Whatever the case, my advice is, if you are starting up your first clients, try to do something for them. 
you see. In, the, in my own case, I found out that those clients were able to refer me to other persons. And over time, I was able to recoup my value as the case, uh, as the case turned out. So that's one advice I'll give you. The other advice when it comes to uh, jobs like that is this. Why not look for businesses that you know that are viable, build models around that business, business, flexible models that users can use, and then sell these models. Sometimes that way you can be able to get more value for your models rather than wait for somebody to come and say, oh, I want to build this uh, model. This is how much I have and so on. You could just be that person behind all other investors that build models and show to people that this can work, this can work, prove it by your models and then get something out of it for yourself. So these are the two ways I, I think that you could make uh, some earnings uh, building financial models. Others would be training on financial model. Okay, so thanks a lot for that. And um, I don't think we can answer any more questions today. That's even the last question. So I, haha. So there's just one on the agenda. We've done the expert journey interview with Charles and uh, he's shared a lot with us and I'm sure you are getting actionable insights from what he has said. So we move to uh, number two. Luckily, we can't do number three anymore. We've already answered questions you have. So yeah. number two, financial analysis versus financial modeling. So uh, maybe I'll just say something that I keep coming across that nowadays when people mm. come to me and they want to sign up for a financial modeling class and I, I try to first find out, you know, do they even know what it is they want to do? So sometimes you see people who just finished university and their motivation is, it sounds really high sounding. I already know Excel. Uh, so what's next? Okay, there's BI. Okay, I'm already doing a course on BI already. I'm already taking some online courses. Okay, financial modeling, that sounds really new and big. And so a lot of time people want to do it because they just feel it's something that sounds so awesome and looks we look good on their CV. And then I've had yeah. cases too where there are some people who they work already in a company. They work in some aspect of the company that involves interacting with reports, sometimes operation reports, sometimes uh, expenses analysis. And then they, they, they say they want to do financial modeling. And you see some of them, what they do, do not even require having to, they don't have access to even the company's financials, you know. All that they have access to is just an aspect of expense that maybe comes under the units they work with or something related to supply chain. They don't see the full financial picture. They are not uh, allowed access to uh, all of the financial data. And then, they, you know, when they keep talking, they, they, they say that they want to use that knowledge when they come to financial modeling they'll be able to show off in their new, in their role with this new knowledge and be able to, you know, apply it. And so Charles, let me let you say your opinion. So, because I'm sure people already have been hearing about mine. Let them hear from someone yes. else. <laughs> okay. so over to you. Yeah, there, there are different ways of seeing it. I like to see it from my background. You see, if I will, if I'm given the opportunity, I would say that um, don't call it financial modeling, call it spreadsheet modeling, so that it's all encompassing. You see, because if we go granular, granular about financial model, let's take out the model out of it. Like I explained before, I will want to go deep on that. Is that a model is actually something that exists, literal, you know, it might be tangible or intangible, but it's, it exists and you know the relationship. And then you want to come in and build it in Excel. You want to put that relationship in Excel. You see, that's why an architect or a quantity surveyor can easily, you know, um, uh, come use Excel to do his work. 
And you will say, oh, he's not doing financial modeling. I'll tell you he's doing financial modeling because he's trying to build a house on a spreadsheet considering what cost, considering what budget. These are financial at items, you see. So for me, I, I, I always see financial modeling, one, as a verb. The science and act of modeling on a, on a spreadsheet, but finance. Then two, I see it as a, 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 I see it as a, 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 a verb, an action word, financial modeling. You get it. But what are you trying to model? What is the thing you are trying to put in there? Can be different. You see that. So that is why you find out that some might uh, might see. Uh, okay, I want to put in. Uh, I've even seen somebody who said that he wants to do a fixed asset model, and he says that he wants to do a financial model of a fixed asset model, and. You know, when that comes up, you start wondering, oh, uh, is that financial modeling? I know financial modeling has three statements, or I'm doing valuation and all of that. Well, for me, I call it financial modeling because he's putting in some financial numbers, and over time, that's going to decide whether the amount, his depreciation, that's going to decide his net book value. That's going to do much of that. So, but if we had it as spreadsheet modeling, then we can call for architects to come for training and do spreadsheet modeling with regards to buildings. We can call for the finance people and do spreadsheet modeling with regards to finance. We can call for the housewives to do spreadsheet modeling with regards to managing their homes and all of those things. But when we put their financial modeling, to me, I, I think we are trying to build some something around the Excel and make it just for ourselves. And that's why you know, like in our Nigerian Excel group, there is this fight or who own Excel. The finance people say they own Excel. And trust people like Victor, they come and say, sorry, Excel is not for you. We engineers use it. For me, I like to put it as spreadsheet modeling so that I don't have that conflict coming on. Okay, so uh, thanks for that. And um, we have come to the end of the one hour. So thanks a lot. Some people are asking, uh, what formulas do you use typically in financial modeling? So I don't know if you want to chip in any formulas to so round it off with that. And uh, for the rest it, of... Okay, please uh, go on. And Okay, so also for everyone, uh, some have asked that can you get your slides so i'm even thinking if you can also uh share where they can reach you you know you have also your consulting business if you can tell them about it how they can also enjoy some of your amazing services okay all right thanks very much all right um uh, for those of you who are asking with regards to functions you can use in financial modeling I have a whole playlist on that in my YouTube channel. You see, I took each function and then I did something and I used examples from financial modeling to do it so that it's like killing, uh, 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 using one stone to kill two birds. You get it. But I, I, it's modular because I didn't take a fin from beginning to the end of a, a, a financial model of a company uh, to teach that. So I think that would be helpful. And you can also put in comments there. You can also get me on uh, LinkedIn. E even if you type my name on LinkedIn, you, you're going to see it there. You could send me a message through that uh, uh, channel. Then you could also send me messages through my, uh, my uh, uh, Twitter. It's uh, O, uh, at O-T-O-C-A, you know, O-T-O-C-A. I'm there on Twitter and I see share videos there. You could also use that to contact me. So, like I said, the startup I'm building up for finance related data analysis is high five systems and high five data and systems. 
but the website does not take that name because uh, uh, we wanted the website to be uh, Matrix Analytica. Matrix Analytica, you know, M-E-T-R-O-I, Ox, Ox, that's the Matrix Analytica. So the, there is no L in the Analytica. It just stops there. So with that one, dot you can com. see uh, what we offer to businesses. Is it dot com? Uh, I'm typing uh, it for them. And upcoming see. training that are coming up. Yes. Like matrix so analytica dot com. So over to you, Michael. OK, so. All right. Uh, thanks a lot once again, and we have exhausted the time duration for today's session. So once again, uh, see you next week, and uh, I hope you are joined you you're on our platform. So if you're on the platform, I'm going to show you the platform address, share with you the platform address where you can always be in loop of future events. Next week, we're going to have a special guest from Ghana, the man holding the whole of Accra, the whole of Ghana. Uh doing amazing things over there, Bang Boteng. So you're going to hear also from someone special, yeah, diverse, I mean, here a different uh, experience, you know, about his own journey, you know, over there. And he has actually a different trajectory. So something you will enjoy. So please make sure you, I've shared the Meetup link where you can always stay in loop of all that we do. Next week, we'll have again another session Today, there's still going to be another session uh, in one hour's time, which is going to be on Excel. We have someone special, Victor Momo, is awesome with Excel. Uh, he does amazing things with Excel. And also 6 p.m., we're going to have another session on business intelligence. There's Evan Sotalo, who is doing wonderful things on both the local and the international space. And he's going to, he has a controversial way around things. So that's, you're going to enjoy that. You know, he's going to give you something unusual. And so thank you once again. Uh, we meet again, same channel, you know, same online channel, and uh, same time next week. Thank you, and have a nice rest of the day. Thank you very much.